Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture series of mobile computing and wireless communication. I am your instructor Ms. Alba Rupala. So today we are going to learn about multiplexing. So topics to be covered today. First of all, we will learn regarding to the multiplexing that what is multiplexing. Then after we will learn types of multiplexing in detail. The first type is SD, uh, SDM that is space division multiplexing, FDM that is frequency division multiplexing, TDM that is time division multiplexing, and CDM that is code division multiplexing. So basically, what is multiplexing? As we can see in diagram that we are having n number of users or n number of input, and we are having only one transmission channel. So, whenever we are having a large number of input data, but single transmission channel, we can multiply all the channel data into the single signal for the transmission purpose. And this kind of example we have already seen in our D triple S topic, in which we had we had uh, cal calculate about the D triple S transmission encoding and decoding on the CDMA network in which we were having two stations, station A and station B. Station A was sending some different data, station B was sending some different data, but we had sent the data into the single signal that is signal S1. Same as we had created another signal for the both the station for another bit of data that was the signal S2. So ultimately, the data of the signal uh, of the station A and station B was combinedly multiplied by into the single signal that is signal S1 or signal S2 and we had sent the single data by the transmission channel. And at the receiver side, we had again calculated for the demultiplexing and we, have, we, we were getting the exact data which was sent for the perfect recipient. So this is the technique which is known as the multiplexing. So by this multiplexing technique we can use our bandwidth very effectively. We can have the cap uh, increase in our capacity of the transmission of data. So basically what is multiplexing? Carrying multiple signal on a single medium or single transmission channel. So it can uh, have it, uh, it is more efficiently utilizing your available transmission media channel. Okay, this is a figure in which we can see that what is the n number of input by multiplexing. We are creating only a single link and only a single channel. Okay, n number of data will be multiplied into a single link, it will be sent on a single channel. At the receiver side, we are demultiplexing the signal. And we will send the original data to the perfect recipient. So this is the process of multiplexing. So next, what is the type of multiplexing? So according to the four dimension, we can have four type of multiplexing. The first one is space division multiplexing. Second one, frequency division multiplexing. Third one, time division multiplexing and fourth one core division multiplexing in which what is the parameter or dimension space frequency time and code okay space frequency time and code now we will discuss this all in detail first of all space division multiplexing okay we can see in example that we are having six number of channel channel k1 k2 k3 k4 k5 up to k6 and we are having three different spaces that is space S1, space S2, space S3 in our diagram. So the channel K1 data will be carried out by space S1. In space S1 we are actually having the 24-7 available bandwidth with the same security code for channel K1 only. Okay, 
for channel K1 only. Likewise, whole space or whole available bandwidth is dedicated to the single user that is channel K1. Okay, same as channel K2 is using space S2, same as channel K3 is using space S3 and so on. So ultimately, what we are doing in SDN, suppose for an example, if, if I, we can say that each and every user is having their own antenna 24-7 time for the transmission, which is having separate frequency range, which is having separate uh, code, a private code, and which is having 24-7 av av availability for the transmission. Okay, so the space division multiplexing, as we have discussed, three dimension which are code time and frequency okay for example if we uh, say that if we want to uh, reduce the interference so it can be reduced by guard space so ultimately uh, the interference will be reduced in a sdn by the spacing mechanism or area spacing okay next next is frequency division multiplexing now we can see in diagram that we have divided our frequency component. We can see that a frequency component is ultimately divided into different different frequency ranges. Suppose we are having our frequency uh, likewise 1 to 100 and we are dividing that frequency into total 4, uh, four uh, sub type, okay sub ranges. Likewise that sub range is what 1 to 24. Okay, 25 is left in, then 26 to suppose 50, so 49, then 50 is suppose being lifted, then 51 to 74, 75 is suppose being lifted, then after 76 to 100. So ultimately what we are having, we are having uh, total 100 frequency, 1 to 100 megahertz frequency in which we are dividing that frequency into 4 equal parts by giving them a guard space so that no inter uh, interference can occur and we are giving that separate part part 1, 2, 3, 4 part 1 to any user k1 part 2 to any user k2 part 3 to any user k3 and part 4 to any user k4 okay so ultimately this frequency band will be 24 7 available for that particular user but what will be the disadvantage of having this FDN this, uh, the disadvantage is what Ultimately, this is a narrow band bandwidth, so the data will uh, the data transfer rate will be very much lower. Okay, this is the disadvantage of having FDM. FDM is nothing but a frequency division multiplexing or non-overlapping frequency band. Okay, I had left it down 25, 50, and 75, which are the guard space. So due to the guard space, no interference can occur. Okay, next one is example obviously it can be a radio station okay no need to obviously uh, this particular bandwidth or frequency is available for any uh, for particular user 24 7 so we don't need any synchronization or coordination mechanism or devices now the next one is cdm Okay, what is CDM ultimately? The CDM is core division multiplexing. It is the most secure one because we are giving a different different code to different different user. Okay, so we are giving code likewise a separate code for transmission, a separate code for uh, transmitter and receiver, then another separate code for transmitter, another transmitter and receiver. Okay, so like this. The transmitter and receiver is sharing a single code which is different from another transmitter and receiver and it is having guard space according to the orthogonality. Likewise, two particular codes will be separated by orthogonality. Now the next type is TDM. In TDM, the whole frequency band is available for Transmission purpose to a single user, but for some pe amount of period time. Okay, some period amount of time. Likewise, for suppose 10 seconds, it will be given to user K1. 
Then for next 10 seconds, it will be given to user K2. For next 10 seconds, it will be given to user K3. For next 10 seconds, it will be given to user K4. And in this 10, 10 seconds, suppose 2 seconds is an interval of guard space. So that no interference can occur. So ultimately, this TDM technology is good technology for bandwidth utilization. Because we are utilizing our bandwidth, fully available bandwidth. Okay, and it can be used by a single user. So ultimately, it is a broadband communication kind of fundamental in which our data is, uh, we are separating or we, we are multiplexing the user data according to the time. So that this amount of time, it will be given to this user, then card space, then this time will be given to this user, then card space. Ultimately, all the data of all the user is being carried out by a single channel in a shorter period of time. So ultimately it will look like that all the, uh, all the user is busy in sending the data. Okay, so this is the advantage that we can transfer with a higher data rate because the bandwidth will be increased. Okay, but what will be the disadvantage of having TDN? The disadvantage is what? Ultimately, this technique is what basically uh, have a proper synchronization. Okay, this technique will recall require a proper synchronization between sender to receiver okay a proper synchronization is must so as we have discussed we have discussed regarding to the sdm then fdm cdm and tdm so as we have discussed that the sdm is well, it is not efficient to use okay so we are not even though using the sdm of course, we can use the STM with the combination of any other technique. Next one, frequency, that is FDM. Okay, frequency uh, revision multi multiplexing. So, the FDM is good, but it is having the narrow bandwidth. And next one is TDM. TDM is good because it is having broadband connection, but we can use it for a smaller amount of time and synchronization is most. So, this is not like that. Uh, we are using uh, that which particular multiplexing technique is best. We can use multiplexing technique or combination of multiplexing technique according to our requirement. That will be the best for any of the application. So thank you. We will meet in our next lecture.